Hey all, Sandy Peterson here. So I did a little Twitter feed of my game closet, so to speak, and people have been asking to see more of it. So here is more of it. Sandy Peterson's main game room used to be the book library. So this first column here is mostly Peterson game stuff. You know, there's there's some out of print stuff like Theo Maki, Orcs Must Die. These boxes here hold lots of Cthulhu Wars figures for playtests. This is again more Peterson game things. God, God's War, Evil High Priest. Some figures that don't fit in boxes. Um, some games I just got off uh, uh, eBay that I haven't sorted yet. 8-Bit uh, Attack, which I love. Planet of the Pocket, obviously, and then a bunch of Axis Dally stuff. Now we're getting over to the role-playing things, in a sense, because it's the dice, right? And then there's games, some of which I haven't played, some of which I have. They're big box games, that's why they're here. Look at the very bottom. This is a bunch of old um, uh, SPI games in the cardboard thing, and any of you guys that remember that are like super old school, so I have a bunch of those. And um, here, here's Megalo Civilization, which I traded for a Cthulhu Wars at, at a convention, um, other things. Uh, in general, the way I think about games is by publisher, not by um, author or topic. So, you, so this section, however, I just cram games in here because they're too big to fit in the other shelves, so it's like whatever I got. And uh, there's the big, there's all the ogres, the big ogre, and then the tiny ogre over there. So I'm kind of proud of the fact I have the, I have the Ziploc bag ogre and the giant ogre. Um, and then like a random, this is, so we're still in the random part. Let's go to the part that's more organized. That isn't just big piles of Kickstarter stuff. So here, start with Avalon Hill. And I have a lot of Avalon Hill games moving their way down. Some of them are quite old. Uh, one of the ones I'm really happy I have is, of course, um, Magic Realm. SBI is here, even though it's technically not Avalon Hill, because, I don't know, because it is. It's just how it ended up. Then we go here. Um, the ticket, my wife loves Ticket to Ride, so I got a bunch of those. Um, World and Flames, my favorite World War II game. Uh, I have a bunch of copies of, two, of Through the Ages, because I, I asked Eagle Games for some for my uh, when I was working at a, at a university for their game school, and they sent me a whole bunch, so that was really nice. I like that. Here's my second favorite World War II game, um, Rommel in the Desert, which is which is the bomb. Um, good old uh, Bowsack, which everyone loves, which if you know about that, you're a lucky man. Play it with your kids. More tickets to ride. Well, you can see what I have here. I don't need to name them off. Um, Working down to piles of, uh, of fantasy flight stuff. All the boxes are too big to fit their stuff in, so they're kind of half open um, because that's the way fantasy flight packages things. Some oldies here that people maybe haven't seen so much. Um, Heritage Models, which has gone gone, did some games for a while. So there's these weird games. Have I played these? Not necessarily. I played most of these games at least once, you know, but not all of them. This one I played with my grandkids. He loves that. Some Frank Chadwick things there at the bottom, I like him. Um, GMT I like too, you can see I actually have a, it may be surprised at how many war games I have here compared to Euro games, but there it is. And I'm just starting letter games and already he's out, outgrowing his spot in the shelf, so I gotta figure out what to do with there. Whenever I go to Germany, I get a bunch of German games at Essen, and then they're like, not in English, and I just figure out how to do them or download it, and then they turn to be really fun, and then it's a pain because I have these weird translated versions that I don't figure out, but so I wish they were less fun. Um, okay, I don't really wish they were less fun, but there it is. So here's more of them, including Yokohama, which my son really likes. Uh, 1944, one of the few games I haven't played. I bought it because I was at um, Half Price Books, and they had a bunch of copies over there, and I w felt kind of sorry for the designer, so I got one kind of to support him, so. I should probably play it and see if it's good, actually. I'm reading a book on Eisenhower right now, so that makes me want to try it a little more. Uh, West End, got the war games. Down here are some old Avalon Hill games. You know, the the the, uh, the ancient stuff. Um, I originally got into the gaming because my dad bought a copy of Gettysburg during the 100th anniversary of, uh, of the Civil War. And here's more big box games that don't fit elsewhere. Um, some of them are, again, super old, like Milton Bradley's Swahili game. Some are not so old, like uh, Catapult Kingdoms, but uh, uh, the, uh, these are old, you know. So there is the collection of games. We'll briefly walk over here. 
and see more Kickstarter games. I'm super excited. I have all the Joan of Arc stuff here. I haven't had a chance to play it post-COVID. But look at this guy. They're just openly punking the size of my game boxes because I because uh, they have to beat me. So, I mean, they did, but what can I say? Um, my son and I like this one, Anachrony. It's a good time travel game. And uh, and my buddy made Fireteam, so Fireteam Zero. Actually, another buddy of mine made Shadows of Brimstone, so that was cool. And uh, there you have it. That is the main game room. There are other game rooms, which I will show. Actually, one of them I'll show right now. So this is the game room my wife made. She put these shelves up here. Try not to show the dirty table. And this is, this is my things I did. So it starts with Call of Cthulhu. It doesn't have all the stuff I did for all, but it has a, a selection, including like Trollpad, Ghostbusters. Then we have video games. They don't take much space really, because it takes a long time to make a video game. They don't produce very big boxes. But this is kind of an order of how I do the life speed, hyperspeed, Doom, going up through AG Empires, Halo Wars, woohoo! Um, and then we start, then in 2013, I start with Cthulhu Wars, and Cthulhu Wars takes up a lot of space. Um, it just goes on and on and on. Uh, here's Lovecraft watching balefully over it all. Uh, I'm sure he would be horrified at the, what I've done. And then Cthulhu Wars finally kind of ends, uh, and then we start with Planet Apocalypse, which takes up slightly less space because I don't have all the, well, because I didn't put all the little boxes for it there. Uh, the God's War? Um, moving on to some, which I'm very proud of, by the way, I love the God's War. Um, okay, these aren't things I did, they're things sent me by people who love me, so they're there. So if you send me something and I love it, I might get up here. Uh, I finally did the Little Cthulhu Wars. Theo Maki from the good old, again, out of print, but from the good old days. You want to play Texas Hold'em Poker for the Souls of Your Worshippers, that's the place. And there's the poker chips, those are super good. I wish we had more of those. Um, <clears throat> I'm not sure where that that, that, that round thing there is probably a map to play Theomaki on. Um, more out of print games that are cool. These are, uh, I think this is, uh, this is Sandy Peters and School of Mythos. Oh yeah, there it is, Sandy Peters and the Mythos. Is it for 5e or for, or for Pathfinder? I'm not sure. Um, but it probably says somewhere in there. And this I'm super proud of. This is Planet Apocalypse, the leather-bound version. Just barely came out. If you ordered it, thanks. And it's it's cool. There's the other version. Um, another plushie. Oh yeah, two books I appear in. I'm in Hobby Games Hundred Best. I'm twice in that uh, for two of my games, Call of Cthulhu and the Ghostbusters. I'm in Famous Mormons, which they originally tried to put me in as a as a uh, programmer, and I said no, no, I'm not. They put me as entertainer. Evil High Priest. Our published book, our published comic, and a few more games then kind of tra trail off into like Rule Island, and uh, oh, then we, we get cool again with the attack. So these ones we don't play. These are just here for display, and no one in the other room we play. And I guess we may as well look at some of the figures. My son is slowly painting them. He's been especially slow the last year, but I try to have all the Cthulhu War figures on display. As you can see, some of them painted. And uh, I think this is all Cthulhu Wars, the whole thing. Yeah, there's all the crazy dice that we sold, that we got. For people, I kind of feel bad about that, but everyone wanted them, so. And then this side, we tried to put things, some other things. These may initially be moved out, but like I have some Theomaki cards. I got Orcs Must Die figures. I really like the art style on those. It's not our art style, it's robots, but you know, whatever. And then here we have God's War Resins, and at the very bottom we have figures we made for a game that was never done because it was the boss fight game, um, Dungeon Boss. We made the figures and showed them off, and then uh, the Kickstarter failed uh, humiliatingly, and we didn't do it. So so I have failure, heroes, world successes. And that's a dog um, who's going to the doctor because she's been itchy lately. <laughs>